Uh, it's a bit of smoke in here. What have we got here? We got a scooter frame, big one, you know, for normal bicycle wheels, without the wheels. Uh, we have a little mini bike uh, with tiny little dirt bike wheels with no motor. She's uh, had better days. The suspension and everything's all pretty rat shit. I mean, pretty uh, pretty buggered. Uh, but the brakes work, uh, like it's only cable over mechanical uh, caliper so it's hard to, for them to go wrong so I've got that got a little old five horsepower the old Honda uh, she's pretty grubby uh, come off a pressure washer and it's got a 19 mil shaft which is ideal because the torque converter it suits a 19 mil shaft and then we got this massive big six <laughs> 65 mil, uh, 65 tooth, 420 pitch rear sprocket, because these units have a, if you can sit down in there, a 420 uh, pitch uh, little tooth. I think it's a 10 or a 12 on that. And then I've got a massive big chain there to we can make it all sort of happen. So the plan is to make this scooter into a petrol powered scooter. So put the old Honda on it, put the torque converter on it with a cover. Of course, we're going to use the safety cover and use the wheels off this thing with its brakes somehow. Now the sprocket on the rear of these is not 420. So we either got to try and adapt the big sprocket or just join it up to this one. I'm not sure yet. So we'll make it work somehow. I'm not real sure if I'm going to use the rear swing arm one way or another, we're going to get it on the back here, so. So, she's a quick and dirty sort of build. Uh, nothing's fancy and new other than the torque converter and the chains and so forth. Uh, so, let's uh, start chucking some stuff together and see what we end up with. So, uh, let's get into it, see if we can have some fun this afternoon. Here we go. So this is where we're at at the minute, <laughs> a couple little snags, uh, but there's always a way around it. Now the rear swing arm, I thought oh, maybe I could just put the wheel straight in the original where the bicycle one went, but um, no, it's too wide, uh, of course. I could just spread these a fair bit, but then I was kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to need somewhere for that motor to sit. So I'm, I'm thinking the motor's going to need to sit here, it's either that or I'll make a a frame and have it all sit up here so the chain just drops straight down. Uh, I didn't really want that. I'm happy for a longer than shorter. So what I think I'm going to do is just lop that off. I don't need that tube. I'm not sure I'll cut it off here. Just jam it in there and weld it on somehow. But I might uh, put a nick out of the bottom of here and straighten that down so it's more flat all the way along because at the moment like besides the block of wood there I sort of want it flat all the way along so it gives it more height. 
if that kind of makes sense. So I can do the back end, that'll be fine. And then I'll have all this room here to mount the uh, five horsepower Honda. And then I'll still have room to stand on and step or step off or whatever. And the next problem, the front wheel. It's sort of like we're a bit on the, you know, it's like the height wise, it, it, there's tons of room. It would fit. So either again, do I just widen it out, spread it right out, and then just sort of bend these tabs back in or something, or like the other issue is then I've got to, because the caliper goes on this side, is I've got to find some way of mounting the caliper on the back here, which is not real hard. I can just weld the little bracket on there, the one that's off the, which isn't real hard. I could probably just make another one if I need to. Uh, funny thing is, this come off. So that would have been good flying along the air. I don't know how they're sort of held on there. Then they're not actually uh, there's there's not oil in here. They're not dampeners or anything. They're just springs. If you take that off and have a look inside, uh, well, there's not enough light. All it is is just a big spring, and it just pushes against this rod. So exceptionally cheap. Uh, the whole rest of the bike was oh, it's really really cheap. But I was thinking maybe I just because uh, these are only just tubes, maybe I just cut them off and I can bolt all that together and the calipers on there and then just cut these tubes off and just weld it on it'll also give me a little bit more height oh, I've just got to modify it a bit I'm not going to use it for anything else it's never going to be back into a bicycle and the mini bike's never going to be back into a mini bike so let's chop it up chop both of them up and make something out of them uh, let's start with the rear end let's do that let's let's cut the back up first and make it into something. It'll be solid mounted. The only real suspension, not that there will be any, is going to be the tyre itself. And I'd, honestly, I, I wasn't originally planning to put any suspension because the other thought was, why don't I just spread these forks apart and put a big bolt all the way through there and then I've got a swing arm sort of thing. But then, where am I going to put the shocky? So the shocky sort of goes here um either originally back up like that but so how do i make it work i can't like i mean there's just too much mucking around to try and make it fit like that because it, at this end this is where the motor is going to sit uh unless i made a frame above it and a big long chain ah oh, no it's just too much mucking around for this one for the old quick and dirty i'm not worried about it uh, we don't need suspension i'll trim these under on the underside and so then I can sort of bend them back down, make them a bit straighter, and then hook them on. I might have to run something all the way underneath, like nice big and straight piece. Don't know what yet. Something that'll give it some strength anyway. So we'll hack into that first. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's get into that. Okay, for some reason, uh, cameras only work when you push the record button. So we've missed a bit, and uh, so I've joined it on. Anyway, we have a nice big long uh, deck, room for the motor. I'll just flip it over, and uh, we'll start doing the front bit. We're probably gonna have to do the same. Uh, here we go.
Well, we got wheels. And they spin. So uh, it's actually relatively level, a little bit high at the, at the front there, but that's because the amount of movement that could uh, happen in the uh, springs, like there's no shock in there, they're just springs. But I think the top bit is probably gonna bend before any of that. And the back bit will definitely bend if I don't put any support under there. Maybe I should try it out. Make sure it rolls properly. <coughs> Whew. Okay, so I'm still alive. Uh, okay, I didn't think about no brakes. But anyway, it goes downhill pretty well. Nice and easy, steers really well. Uh, I didn't see those springs go in and out, but hey, you know, it's a quick and dirty sort of build this one. Anyway, so I've got the motor sitting about where I want it, but I think it's going to have to go further across to allow for the sprocket and the uh, torque converter and things like that. We'll start getting all the torque converter and everything bolted onto the shaft and everything. I'll clean the shaft up. It's been sitting around for a while and uh, go from there. I got it off a fella who said he, he's not sure if it still works or not. The pressure washer side didn't work off the pressure cleaner unit. And uh, he said, yeah, I could have it. So I took it home. As I took it off the ute, I gave the uh, throttle a couple of pulls and uh, started. So I thought, oh, I'm going to keep that. So anyway, I'll uh, fiddle with that torque converter. We'll see if we can get the motor mounted. We might get around the brakes, maybe. The brakes are so overrated. I don't know what people are on about. So let's get these wheels to turn uh, by themselves instead of me or killing myself. Okay, so where we're up to is uh, engine mount is all welded and we've got a couple little gussets on there. 
nice and tidy. And uh, all bolts on, which is awesome. Now I've got to try and give the main chassis rail, if that's what you want to call it, some strength. So I've got these, which will run the whole length. I could just weld them on straight like that, but I thought, what if I try and get a little bit fancy? Okay, so if I put uh, these little blocks under it, put them sort of periodically along the rail, give it some strength, and then uh, sort of finish that off down to there on a taper somehow and do the same with this end, taper it down. It's sort of like a ladder frame, I guess, but it's made out of box tube instead of round tube because I don't have any round tube laying around. So I'll just pop all that together and see how it looks. It's got to give it some sort of strength because uh, we've got this extra gusset here to give that portion some strength we just need to overall give it some strength so i'll tack all that in place and see how it all looks eh then we should be ready for some brakes maybe maybe i know they're not important but anyway let's get into that There we go. So we have plenty of support. Nice big rail all the way along. Ended off nice and tidy. And the motor mount is all in place. I think we're ready to put a little deck on. Or we'll bolt the motor back on and put the chain on. Put a little deck on. And we might put some brakes on it. Like we just got to put the caliper and the cable all the way back up to the front there. It should be long enough, I'm hoping. Back one might be a little bit tricky. Like it's all in operation, so all I got to do is run a cable of some kind to go. It's a bit longer than the original, so. Anyways, we're, uh, we're getting somewhere. You know how I said it was going to be quick and dirty? Well, I kind of got too tidy and wanted to make it stronger and uh, anyway <laughs> well uh, at least it won't bust in the first 10 minutes well you know unless I do something crazy like go over a jump or something uh, it's always on the cards anyway <laughs> let's uh, get some bits together eh? here we go
uh, I come across a problem. Uh, here's the old muffler, like it had that shield over it, that one there, which I'll probably put back. The only thing is, uh, one of the bolts come out really easy and the other one, snap. So we've got a broken bolt inside the head. Lovely, just what we wanted. So I've just put this inside that hole and I've just jammed a rag in there. So if I weld a washer over it and then I weld a nut to that washer, uh, then I'll be able to hopefully undo it. Cause it was only a tiny little, it was only a tiny little six mil bolt. So I'm not holding in there and I wasn't in real good shape by the looks there. Yeah, so I've got to try and get that out of there. Now, if this doesn't sort of work, like weld the washer on, generally no real trouble, weld the nut on a couple of tacks and then a shifter on it, or a spanner on it, it should come out. If it don't, well, I've got to drill it and try and easy out it. Uh, it's just lots of fun. Anyway, so come along for the ride and uh, see if I can get this, uh, this thing out of there. And we're sort of nearly ready because uh, I've done the, as you saw, I, I just done the throttle. I had uh, installed a throttle lever and a handbrake lever, uh, not a handbrake, uh, a front brake lever. So we've got front brakes uh, and they work really, really well from what I can tell. And the wheel still turns. So, and I've, I've completely made up the whole muffler system. A couple of joints. This was an old mini bike muffler anyway. So all I did was altered it and uh, put a bigger hole in the back end because it had a little tiny thing. Then I'll just put the uh, air cleaner box back on because I just took it off for the moment to make this uh, uh, the little doodad thingy there for the throttle. It's worked out really well. And we've got a spring over here to keep it back to idle. Yeah, it lets it come back to an idle. So. Anyway, uh, let's try and get this try and get this stud out, eh? This broken stud. Uh, I've jammed that rag in there so no sparks will get in there and nothing will get into that hole. Let's see what we can do with that, eh? Here we go. There we go. There's the uh, the old welder washer on the broken stud trick. And then weld a nut on, or tack weld it, and then eventually it's going to come out. Pretty good, eh? And no no damage to the uh, head or the, the where the manifold bolts up. Take out my little rag, and I can just. Give that a light sand with a sandpaper or just put a file across it and it should be nice and tidy. And we'll be able to just pop a screw back in there. There we go. Like a new one. Let's carry on.
You have back brakes. That's the way. We got brakes, we got throttle, front brakes. Oh yeah. We should be right to give it a shot. I'll just pop you guys on the tripod, see what we can do, eh? See if I can get it run. Well, that's bloody awesome. I reckon that's, uh, I don't know, well, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a beast. So, uh, I think I should do a couple of tests with it before I actually go for a ride. So uh, let's try that. Gonna need this, I think. Here we go.